Just one packet can bring down a vulnerable DNS server thanks to DNSSEC. You don't have to do more than disconnect uh, an entire network. A single packet can exhaust the processing capacity of vulnerable DNS server, effectively disabling the machine by exploiting a 20-plus year old design flaw in DNSSEC specification. Damn. Just one packet can destroy the machine? <sighs> and, 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 and so what, 1,500 bytes? What's, what's the MTU? All right, uh, that would be uh, that would make it trivial to take down uh, a DNSSEC validating DNS resolver that has yet to be patched, ups, uh, upsetting all the clients relying on that service and making it seem as though the website and apps were offline. Okay, okay, okay. The academics who found this flaw associated with the German National Research Center for Applied Security, Cybersecurity, Athene, Classic in Darms, Darmstadt uh, claimed DNS server software marks brief or markers briefed about the vulnerability described as the worst attack on DNS uh, ever discovered. Reading is hard, dude. Reading sometimes is hard. Identified by Professor Haya Sh uh, Shalomen and uh, Nicholas Vogel of the Goethe University, Frankfurt, Elias uh, Heftrig of uh, Fraunhofer SIT and Professor Michael O. Wadener uh, at the Technical University of Darmstadt and uh, Fraunhofer uh, SIT. The security hole has been named the key trap designated CSV 2023-50387 and assigned a CVSS severity rating of 7.5 out of 10. Is, is the severity rating, is this like a logarithmic scale? Is this kind of like earthquakes? I assume, I assume it's like the Richter scale. Like an 8.5 is just huge. 7.5 is pretty freaking bad. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't, is there like a categories? Is there someone that has like a nice little like graphic infographic to understand why a 7.5 out of 10 is bad? Because when I hear 7.5 out of 10, I think, oh, it's not that bad. But you guys are saying 7.5 is pretty dang bad. Two inches is all she needs. I don't, I don't know, pick the lies we tell ourselves sometimes. As of December 2023, approximately 31% of web uh, clients worldwide use DNSSEC validating DNS resolvers and, like other applications, rely on those systems. All right, so so low is there, medium's here, high falls into this this area, and so critical is 9 to 10, high is uh, 7 to 8, 8.9, so high. It's, so it's, it's pretty dang, it's pretty dang bad is the way to look at it. Pretty dang high, called it, dude, just so high. Okay, uh, with those DNS servers taken out by the flaw, clients relying on them would be unable to resolve domain and host names to IP addresses to use, resulting in a loss of connectivity. I cannot believe that is possible by a single packet. I really, I mean, I don't, it doesn't look like they're going to go into the exact details, but I want to know how. The researcher said lone DNS packets exploited, uh, exploiting key trap could stall public DNS validated DNS services, such as those provided by Google and Cloudflare, by making them do calculations over uh, that overtaxed server CPU cores. The disruption of DNS could not only deny people's access to the content, but could also interfere with other systems, including spam defenses, cryptography defenses, uh, PKI, and interdomain routing security, RPKI, the researchers assert. Let's see, explorations, exploitations of this attack would have severe consequences for any application using the internet, including unavailability of technologies such as web browsing, email, and instant messaging, they claimed. With Keytrap, an attacker could completely disable a large part of the World Wide Web. That's in, that's impressive. A non-public technical paper of the vulnerability provided to the register titled The Key Trap Denial of a Service Algorithmic Complexity Attacks on DNS described how an assault would be carried out. It basically involves a vulnerability in DNSSEC validating DNS resolver to look up an address that would cause the server to contact a malicious name server that sends a reply that causes the resolver to consume most or all of its own CPU resources. Oh. Oh, wow. Okay. That's a, that's an interesting that's an interesting move to initiate uh, the attacks our adversary causes the victim resolver to look up a record in its malicious domain the due to be pub published paper states the attacker's name server responds to the DNS queries with the malicious record set RR set according to the specific attack vector and zone configuration the attack works the paper explained because the DNS spec uh, sec spec follows uh, Postel's law the name servers should send all the available cryptogra uh, cryptographic material and the resolvers should use any of the the cryptographic material they receive until the validation is successful. Oh, does it just like keep sending cryptographic data? Is that what they're saying? This requirement to ensure availability means DNSSEC validating DNS resolvers can be forced to do a lot of work if presented with colliding key tags and colliding keys that must be validated. 
So it's just like it's like a this is like a pure this is like a what's it called a, a something grizzly a repulsive grizzly attack a simple a very simple request can effectively cause a complete CPU lockdown that prevents any anything else from being served. Yeah, DDoSs itself. Are, it's just like those regex expansion attacks. Our complexity attacks are triggered by feeding the DNS resolver with specifically crafted DNS sec records, which are constructed in a way that exploits validation vulnerabilities in cryptographic validation logic. Dang. Crypto bros just in shambles right now. Dude, is this why is this why the Board 8 Yop Club monkeys are going down in values? <laughs> Anyways, I thought it was funny. Uh, when the DNS resolvers attempt to validate the DNS sec records they receive from our name servers, they get stalled. Our attacks are extremely stealthy, being able to stall resolvers between 170 seconds to 16 hours, depending on the resolver software with a single DNS response packet. Jeez. How do they do that? It, I mean, it, it's just such a small amount of bytes. Right? Like, a single packet is not a lot of data. The Athene Bofins said, uh, Bofins... These uh, said they worked with all relevant vendors and major public DNS providers to privately disclose the vulnerability so a coordinated patch release would be possible. The last patch was finished today. Nice. We are all aware of this vulnerability and rolled out a fix to co uh, in coordination with the reporting researchers. A Google spokesperson told the register, there is no evidence of exploitation and no action required by users at this time. Boffins. Yeah, boffins. Shit eventually will sink. I know, dude, this is wild that someone could discover this 20 years later, too. Like, that's the crazy part. Network Research Lab, uh, NLNet Labs, published a patch for its unbounded DNS software addressing two vulnerabilities, one of which is key trap. The other, uh, the other bug fixed, this one, refers, uh, referred to as NSEC3 vulnerability, allows, also allows denial of service through CPU exhaustion. Dang. The key trap vulnerability works by using a combination of keys, also colliding keys, signatures, and a number of RR sets on a malicious zone. Answers from that zone could be, uh, can force the DNS sec validator down a very CPU-intensive and time-costly validation path. PowerDNS, meanwhile, has an update here to thwart key trap exploitation. Dang. This is, uh, dude, I can't believe people still find these things. Like, imagine something this old. Right since uh, since at least August 20, uh, 2000, more than twenty three years ago, Keytrap has been present in the Bind Nine DNS resolver. Like that's wild that the internet could have been destroyed for just twenty three years. It could have just like someone could have just destroyed it for a while. It's wild that that could be that could just exist for that long. And it surfaced seven years later in the Unbounded DNS Resolver. Dr. Haya Ashulman, a professor of computer science and one of the academics behind Keytrap Research, told the register in a phone interview that the attack is simple and can be carried out by encoding it in a zone file. Uh, it would have been resolved that long ago. It would have been resolved. That, see, that's why I uninstall Bind. <laughs> it's why I never use Bind in JavaScript for this exact reason. The vulnerability is actually something uh, that's recommended in the DNSSEC standard. <laughs> Just record. Let's see. One packet suffices. You don't have to do more than that to disconnect an entire network. <laughs> it's actually a feature. We we made this one intentional. Uh, Prof. Schulman said that the patches that have been issued by various vendors break the standard. The problem is this attack is not easy to solve. She said, "If we launched it against the patch resolver, or patch resolver, we still get 100% CPU usage, but it can still but it can still respond." Okay, so you peg it, but not for too long. Updated uh, to add on February 16th. You can now download the technical paper here. Oh, interesting. I want to look at that. I want. I do want. I do want to look at this at some point. I won't look at this on stream. This is obviously entirely. This is this is not stream material. Oh, just like it. Just like it's just like a constant failure and has to rehash things. Too many words, D dude. Too, d dude. This is not a Haskell stream. This is not a Haskell stream. Though this is like super interesting. Dang it! Now I gotta go read this. This is way too long, but it seems really interesting. This seems super interesting. The white paper, Jen. What a time to be alive. I know. All right. Hey, the name is, it's crazy that the internet hasn't died. Honestly, it's crazy that the internet has not died and that we, we just keep on going forward despite the fact, like how, how is this possible? How is this even possible? A uh, Jen. 